Greetings, everyone. I am the official urban therapist. The video I'm getting ready to present to y'all is um, a sermon that, that I did. The sermon that, that I did is called, it's entitled, The Journey to uh, the Salvation Truth. Now, I, I did this video around, I think around about now in 2016 or so. And this and this um, particular sermon was my final sermon that I ever did as a um, minister. So, 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 um, I was reviewing the video again, and I just found the one pretty uh, interesting. So, I want to just share with with y'all on today. So, with, without further ado, here's my final sermon that I ever did as a minister called "The Salvation Truth." I hope y'all enjoy and continue to fight faith with faith. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Well, truly it is a honor and privilege like ours to be in the, in the house of the Lord on this wonderful Sabbath day. Um, I'd like to thank God for the opportunity to want to minister today. I'd also like to want to thank Pastor Rogers for also allowing me the opportunity to want to minister to the saints as well. And I thank you on True Way House of God for allowing me the opportunity to minister to you today. Amen. Because norm, normally in other situations, um, I'll be assisting the ministry in the praise and worship and stuff. But y'all allow me an opportunity to actually uh, minister today. So I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very overwhelmed. And I guarantee you that I won't keep you here for very long. But I guarantee that it's a word for us today. I'm going to let y'all know this right now. The people who are here today, this is who is meant to be here today. Yes. Let me yes. say this again. The people who are here today is meant to be here today. Yes. Now, I know that um, sometimes, um, you know, especially as being, being, a mom, being a pastor and being an overseer and stuff, when, when you kind of see the, the church kind of half full, you know, it, 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 it's, it's like one of them um, leadership things where, you know, it, it kind of bothers you because you be wanting to know where, where one's at and stuff right, like that right. and stuff, you know what I'm saying? But I guarantee you that um, as being, being around pastor, as I'm being a pastor, he's praying for everyone and everyone, you know, God's watching over everyone as well and yeah. stuff. So yeah. so once again, we just appreciate you, you being here today. Yeah. Amen. Once again, like I said, I'm not going to be before y'all very long. Uh, many of you who, who uh, know me or who uh, heard me on uh, minister before, when I literally say I'm not going to be before you very long, I mean what I say. Once when, once when uh, the Holy Spirit is done, I'm done. And I mean that. I don't believe in no need to preach, no less on teaching. That's another day. Messed up. <laughs> Amen. So let's let's go and jump into this song word, okay? Y'all ready for it? Y'all ready for this word today? Yeah. All right. Now, this this song, this song word that, that I ministered today, uh, this really comes into the heart with me. Could, could I just share a story with y'all? Yeah. We're gonna share a story. And this story is about, by the way, a young man, a young man named Robert Washington. This story is about a man named Robert Washington who was living, you know what I'm saying, just growing up, living life. He, um, uh, he, he had a mother and father who, who both were some, you know, ministers. Um, one, one was a uh, associate pastor, another one is a uh, prophetess. Um, have have wonderful brothers and sisters. Uh, have have a grandmother, grandfather uh, who's in the ministry. Have have uncles who's in the ministry. This was sitting around being in, being in the ministry and stuff. Right? Have cousins and stuff as well. You know what I'm saying? Now this story about Robert Washington is this: is that have y'all ever thus got to the point in life where you just really, really, really just trying to find out who you are? Have you ever been, been there before? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to share with you my story of how I got from where I was into where I'm at right now. The, the title of this song, of this sermon that, that I'm going to mention today is the, the Journey for the Salvation Truth. The Journey for the Salvation Truth. Now, I want to share with y'all my journey for the Salvation Truth. First of all, I'm just going to put it to y'all this way. When, when, when I was growing up and stuff, you know what I'm saying, uh, I just, you know, go to church because, you know, 
Uh, that was the thing to do. My mom, my, my dad, you know what I'm saying, my grandma and I. So they, they put that in me to go to church. So I just did it. Being a kid, that's what I do. And so, so I did it every single one. Uh, it was a little bit different for me. Uh, I did it uh, every single Sabbath. I did it every single Sunday. Uh, if I was in, in church in the Sabbath with my mom, so I was in church Sunday with my dad. Uh, if, uh, if I wasn't um, um, holding on to, you know, uh, y'all remember when we was doing the fasting and stuff like that. If I wasn't here in the feast days fasting with my mom, I guarantee that that was in Wednesday night Bible study with my dad. My, my last schedule being in church uh, from Sunday through Saturday, almost seven days a week, church. Church, church, and more church. Yeah. Now, I, I see my cousin stuff like you like, oh yeah, I remember that. Lord Jesus. Now, you can imagine how growing up, how it feels to be in a household with uh, you know, going to church all the time and stuff like that and stuff, especially when you're young. When you're young, you know what I'm saying, you be like, man, I just want to get out and just enjoy life. I just want to do, yeah. I just want to do me. And stuff, you know what I'm saying? But I did it, you know what I'm saying, to honor my parents and stuff like that. I did it to uh, honor my mother and my father and all this stuff there. You know what I'm saying? And honor people. That's what I did. And so, so I did it. But it came to a point in my life where I had to start finding out who I was. I had to start finding out myself. I had to find out my own journey and stuff. You know what I'm saying? See, parents, um, me being a parent and all sorts of stuff like that, I didn't realize this is that sometimes, you know what I'm saying, when we be protective of our children, we don't allow them to have our identity for themselves mm -hmm. because we want what's the best for them. I yeah. understand, I'm a yeah. father. Yeah. We want the best for our children. Yeah. So we give our children an identity that will protect them, that will make them be safe, poor, be poor, you know what I'm saying, be safe from the world. And that's what we do as parents because we as parents, we have been through the process of dealing with the world. You know what I'm saying? We know what, what the world has to offer out there. So we want to protect our children like that. But in the process of us protecting our children, what ended up happening is that we end up um, um, we end up shortcoming them. You know what I'm saying? We end up kind of overprotecting them. Where they don't necessarily, they necessarily don't know what's out there in the world. So therefore, when they finally get ready to get out into the world, that's when the world started trying to, I'm, I mean, am I talking to myself? Like, take for example, for myself, when, when I finally started, when I became um, 21, when I became 21, I'm not going to lie to y'all, y'all going to be mad at me, I'm sorry, grandma, but you're going to be mad. I was clubbing. I was clubbing hard. I was chasing out the women hard. I was doing, I was Living it up because when you're 21 years old, you want to see what the world is out there, right? You want to see what's out there. You want to see. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see exactly what what was it that my parents was hiding me from? Yeah. It's not a point of like being rebellious or nothing like that. You just have to sometimes experience life for yourself, or sometimes you know what I'm saying. You just have to allow life itself to uh, give you the lesson or give you the beating. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I did. I went out there, you know what I'm saying? I had friends, um, we go up, and I ain't lying, we go up, and as we young people say, go and turn up hard. You know what I'm saying? We'll go out to the world, we'll go um, do our thing. We, um, my thing was that I go out and um, chase women, I go out and, um, you know, go to clubs, you know, do some drinking and all that kind of stuff. That's what I did, the stuff, because I wanted to have fun. Now, meanwhile, while me having fun and stuff, right, I was, uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to be real. Can, can I be real? Yeah. Can I be real with y'all today? When I was out there, I had no, 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 no thought process, even thinking about like um, God or even thinking about even being in church. All I wanted to do is live life. Now, I, I know I'm relating to people people here today. And yeah. stuff, right? That's all I want to do, just live life. Yeah. It wasn't that, and my mom said that, man, I just want to read. I want to go out and see and I want to do this and stuff. I'm just being real with y'all. I just want to live life. Like how life presents itself to be. So that's what I did and stuff. And right now, that's how I deal with many young, young people still right now and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And parents ain't the necessary thing that, you know, um, children and stuff like that just want to do that thing to be rebels. It does that. We just have to, sometimes you have to let go and allow your child to live. 
You know what I'm saying? So that was my thing. I just want to go out and just live, experience life and stuff like that. And so, so that's what I did and stuff. So through this journey, me living life and stuff, I was doing my thing, you know, enjoying it. Enjoying it heavy. Then all of a sudden, a thought process came to me. I started thinking, is this it? Is this all that life has to offer? That's for me just to, you know, do what I'm doing? So I started thinking about that. And I'm like, maybe it's something else I'm missing. So I started going out and doing more stuff, starting experiencing the world even more, stuff like that. Started doing different other things and stuff. So I'm like, dang, is this it? Is this how that life has to maybe, maybe I just need to slow down a bit. So that's what I did. I ended up slowing down, uh, ended up um, finding, finding a woman, uh, ended up eventually uh, getting married, and you know, had the whole American dream yeah, scheme yeah, going on and yeah. stuff, right? Where I had the had the wife, had the children, had the um, as you say, the quote unquote white picket fence, yeah, everything, yeah. had the big house, everything and stuff. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, yeah, this has got to be it. This is what this is it right here. I did did it, the American dream and stuff, right? But my brothers and sisters. I still felt like something was missing. Yeah. I still felt like something was missing. So, what I ended up doing, that's when I started getting to the point where I like, maybe I need to, maybe I need to just start listening to my parents and start going back to church. So I started doing that. I started listening to my parents. Uh, I uh, actually started going to church. End up on, end up on eventually um, being part of the worship team. Uh, I, I mean, Pastor, I, I, I went, I was from the, from the bottom to the top. I started out being a deacon. Then from a deacon, uh, I ended up becoming an armor bearer. From an armor bearer, I became a worship leader. Then from a worship leader, I ended up be becoming a minister. Then from a minister, I ended up becoming the associate to the pastor. And I'm like, this has got to be it. Yeah, I'm doing it and stuff. I got my family, I got the white picket fields. Now I'm doing the ministry thing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm slow down, I'm cool and stuff. Thank you that this is it. Lord, this is it. We doing it. But still, my brothers and sisters, it was, felt like something was missing. It something felt like I, it felt like I was missing something. So at this point, I started really, 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 really seeking God and stuff. At this point, like God, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, and I don't know what's missing and stuff. But now I'm at the point where I just really need to just seek You, seek Your face, because I know it's something missing. I know it's something missing. So I began to seek God. So when I began to see God and stuff like that, um, my thing that the very first thing I started seeking was the truth about salvation. I started wondering, like, is it really true about salvation? Is it really true that we, we have to do these necessary things? Matter of fact, let, let us go into our word now. Let's go into the, the Bible if you have one. Um, We're we going to read a very familiar scripture. It's on Romans chapter 10, verse um, 9 through 13. Very familiar scripture. Uh, us preachers, we, we call this the salvation script. We will quote this thing up and down, left and right, everything. You know what I'm saying? Two people. To let them know what must you do to be saved. So we're going to read it. It says this, that if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jews and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all that call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I like, that's it. That's what I need to do. All I got, all I got to do is convince Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Cool. So that's what I did. Um, pastor. I know uh, as me being a minister and stuff like that, I went up and like, I need to get baptized, man. And I need to truly be saved. That's what I did. I, I ended up becoming baptized. Um, then after that, I'm talking about water baptism, by the way. Ended up being baptized. Then, from, from that point on, I truly, truly confessed Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm like, yes, this, yes, God, this is it. Still feeling empty, y'all. Still feeling up. I'm like, Lord, I don't know why am I feeling so. Can y'all relate to me? I'm, Lord, I don't know why I'm still feeling so empty. Why 
me doing all these things, thinking it's right, but yet still I feel so incomplacent. I still feel it's something missing. What is it that's missing? So even from there, I begin to, at this point, I begin to become dis, become disencouraged. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I end up becoming real discouraged. I end up um, start thinking like, man, God, I don't know. I don't know, God. I don't know. I'm doing all these things, but I, I just don't know. Not to mention, start going through all these problems and circumstances in my personal life as well. Yeah. That whole thing that I was telling y'all earlier about the wall, uh, the American dream, the white picket fence, stuff like that, that start immediately start crumbling down. Come on now. Thinking that this is how it's supposed to be, but now it seems like it's all going away. Yeah. You, you know, um, it reminds me of um of the, of the book of Job. When Job, he was a righteous man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all know that Job, he was a righteous man. He was after God's own heart and all yeah. that stuff there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He did everything possible to see God and, you know, he did everything. So, right? Then all of a sudden, bam, everything just started falling apart to him. Everything. And I started feeling that way for real. Literally feeling that way. Like, what is going on? God. And I start questioning it too, like, God, what is going on? What, what is it, Lord, that I'm missing? What is it, God, that I'm missing? So I be, begin to reevaluate myself. I begin to want thinking to myself, like, dang, it got to be something better. I'm not going to lie, y'all. When all this situation was happening to me, can, 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 I, can I show y'all my story? It's all right, brother. Every single time this stuff was happening to me and stuff, I'm not going to lie, y'all. It sent me a downward, downward spiral. I end up becoming sad. I end up becoming depressed. I end up start losing myself. All because I didn't have an identity. All because I, I knew about God because I grew up. Knowing about God, yes. but it was something missing. Yeah. Can y'all relate to me today? Yeah, it was something yeah. missing. Well, now. So I started losing myself. I started losing the identity and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I started losing everything. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, um, it, was, it was a point of time where I, where I actually lost my father as well. Where my father, he was one of the the key influence. Of me. You know what I'm saying? So once when I even lost my father, I started, I didn't, I didn't have an identity no more. I didn't know what to do. Everything, my whole life was centered around doing things where my, my parents want to do, doing things where my family want to do. All because I'm thinking that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? That I have to do it. So I started losing myself. So from this point, my brothers, my sisters, I ain't going to lie. I started giving up. I started giving up on everything because I didn't know who I was. Now, just like I say, this is my journey for the salvation truth. Mm. Now, I'm, now, as I continue my story, I want y'all to just reflect um, even on y'all experience, y'all life experience. I want y'all to also reflect on who you really are. You know what I'm saying? Or are you here right now? Just because um, mama, daddy told you to be here, or you be here just because um, it's the traditional way for you to be here, or is it, or you, or were you like me? You trying to find something. You trying to find truth. You trying to find the Most High God. Let me show show y'all deep, more deep into my story. Now, as I go further to find the truth about who I am. I discovered something. I discovered something that was very, very important that I was missing. What I discovered what was missing was the close, key relationship with the Most High God connecting with the Holy Spirit. Now, many churches don't too much preach about the Holy Spirit. They preach about the relationship with, with Jesus Christ. No doubt about that. But many churches don't preach 
about the even the connection about the Holy Spirit. Little alone, don't even tell you how to get that connection with the Holy Spirit. Let me share this with you, stuff on. We flow on with the Spirit. All right. Let me let me share this with you. Now I know we are church people, right? And we know the Bible, right? So in John chapter three, it tells a story about a name man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus, he asked the teacher Jesus a very important question. He started talking to him about what it means to be born again. Now, when you see this scripture, John chapter three, verse one through twenty-one, when you see this scripture, it's the right. I ain't gonna lie. You're gonna be just like Nicodemus. You're gonna be looking like, Jesus, what in the world are you talking about? How in the world can one man be born again? That's, that's ludicrous. That's impossible. That is impossible for a man to be born again. So I'm like Nicodemus at this point. I'm reading the scripture. I'm, well, when I first studied, I read the scripture like 20 times. Like, I don't get it. What are you talking about? This is crazy. How can you be born again? This is crazy. So it started doing something to, to me. I started want to see even more about what Jesus was talking about by, by being born again. So when he started talking about Nicodemus about being born again, what he was talking about, he wasn't talking about something natural. Come on. See, y'all missing the point. He wasn't talking about something Take natural. Time, Take your time. He was talking about something spiritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you about my story again. Now, all the things that I was doing, I was looking for things natural. <laughs> See, y'all missing it. See, I was looking for things natural. Come on, come on. I mean, I was looking for the, the, the women. I was looking for the life. I was looking for the American dream. I was looking for all these things natural. Come on now. But I didn't understand nothing spiritual. Don't you see? So at this point, that's when I like, hold up, hold up. I got to do something different. As I, as I say in football, I need to call it audible on this one. So I need to change the play up a little bit here about my understanding. So what I end up doing, I end up changing my whole thought process. I like, in order for me to get like, What's he talking about being born again? This spirit thing. What is this spirit thing he's talking about? It's the what is that? It's a so I started investing about the spirit. Y'all, I started learning about the spirit, and it literally changed my whole life. Now, get into the salvation part. See, it's true that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, then you shall be saved. That is true. That is 100% true. But I will tell y'all this, that it doesn't stop right there. It doesn't stop with just your confession. Man, it, it's something deeper than that. It's your spirit. Can I take y'all the, it's, it's your life change. It's your lifestyle that changes around. And it don't have nothing to do with what you want, uh, living a life that your mama want to live, that your daddy want to live, that your uncle's cousin, sister, brother want to live. This is a life that the Most High God wants you to live. Yeah. So it changes totally around the 4360 and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm reminded of another one of scripture too. So this is like one of my favorite scriptures that I always say. And it's Romans chapter 12. It says this. It says, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is your reasonable service. And this is my favorite part. And do not conform to this world, but what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that it's good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Let's investigate this real quick. Let's investigate this real quick. Now, there's something key in this scripture. Look, it says this. Do not be conformed to this world. Yeah. Did I not just tell y'all earlier about me? Yeah. About I'm looking for all these things and stuff like that, this stuff. That's been conforming. Do not be conformed to this world, but it said to be transformed. Now, when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he was talking about a transformation yeah. to take place. Yeah. He was talking about nothing natural. This thing that he was talking about, it was spiritual. And all the way for a spiritual transformation to take place is that it occurs in your mind. 
Jesus, y'all missed me tonight. So look, when when it occurs in your mind, the scripture says this: transforming by the renewing of your mind. So right, y'all know what it's talking about, about the renewing, right? This ain't talking about just no one time deal. Like once when your mind is renewed, is it? No, it said renewing. That's a continuation, meaning that it's an over and over and over experience, meaning that. When you receive the Holy Spirit, it's not gonna be just a woo. Oh, no. I'm not getting on y'all today about your tradition. It's, it's more than that. It's the it's more than that. It's it's more than that. Now now pay attention, it's more than that and stuff. It's more than just that experience. It's more than uh, as the speeches say, you feel a shudder in your bones while you feel fire in your bones and stuff like that. It's more than that. It's a lifestyle. It's a change. It's a continual change. It's your mind being changing over and over and over again. It's, it's, it comes to a point where you start seeing stuff differently and stuff like that. You know what? I'm reminded, I don't know if y'all seen the movie, but I'm reminded of the movie The Matrix. You know at the very end of the movie The Matrix, that character Neil, he starts seeing things differently. Looking like, whoa, this is different. That's the renewing of your mind when you start seeing stuff differently and stuff. You start seeing when, when you see people doing stuff, you see it differently. You're like, this is different. I remember, um, I remember um, looking at people and stuff like that and stuff that they do and stuff. That stuff that used to make me mad, but it don't make me mad no more and stuff. I start seeing the difference and stuff. When people come against me and stuff come against me, come against my family and all stuff, I used to get pissed off. I ain't going to make a lot. But now, I sure did, preacher, but now, it don't make me mad no more at all. See, this time, instead of people making me mad, I'm like, God bless you, brother. My mind, that totally change. That's the renewing of your mind. It's a continuation and stuff. It's an over and over type of thing. So, my brothers and my sisters, as I journey through this salvation truth, I want to tell y'all also this, is that if you don't know, if you haven't got to that point of actually knowing what the Holy Spirit is, if you haven't got to that spiritual connection with the Father, then you're missing something. You're going to always be empty. You're going to always be trapped in ideology. You're going to always be trapped in, as we say, religion. You're going to be always trapped. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. It ain't. Now, okay, y'all. It ain't nothing wrong with worshiping on the Sabbath. It ain't nothing wrong with you doing the feast day and stuff like that. It ain't nothing wrong with that. It is cool. You know what I'm saying? You want to know why there ain't nothing wrong with that? Y'all want, want me to tell you? Yeah, y'all, y'all want to tell me. It ain't because God told us so. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the reason why. And I'm going to give you, okay, I'm going I'm to bust a Jesus on you. I'm going to give you a parable why. Okay, now. Have y'all ever been in love before? Damn, y'all never been in love before with the world? Oh, yeah. Good Lord. Tell brother. Have you ever been in love before? Have you ever wrong when you love that person that you want to do things for them? Not because they tell you to do it, because you love them. Yeah, yeah. Because you just want to love them. I, I know um, when, when I love someone, I do things, you know, I do things for them. I try to give them flowers, give them roses, all, you know. Tell them that I love them and stuff like that. Not because they're making me do it. I don't have to do nothing. I do it because I want to do it. Because it's in my heart to do it. So therefore, that's what I'm telling y'all about that, about the worshiping on the Sabbath, about doing the feast day. Don't be doing it because you think that God going to be the boogeyman to get you. Do it because you love him. You know what I'm saying? Because you love him and you love everything that he does for you. Regardless if he bless you or not. Regardless if he bless you with your little beans. Or your house or your car or not. Do it because you love him and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because you love him. You know what I mean? And that's the reason why we do what we do. Matter of fact, that's the reason why we up in here today, right? We up in here fellowship and we praise and worship and stuff, right? Because what? We love him, right? At least I hope that's why we're here for, right? Because we love him. Well, not to mention that we fellowship with family, too, because we love family. I love y'all. And we love family and stuff, right? So that's the whole process of the salvation truth is that you got to get from point A, which is the understanding 
about salvation, which is the confession and believing in Jesus Christ. That's point A. Or step A. Then, then the step B, once when you get to, once when you pass A, step B, that's when you start realizing about the Holy Spirit and stuff like that and stuff. Then, step C, which is the, the good step, is once when you do all that stuff, I'm telling you, saints, once when you be renewed by your mind, it's going to be nearly impossible for you not to uh, mess up with doing his God's law, statutes, and commandments. It's going to be, a, oh, God. Don't don't the wrong Bible say be ye perfect for I am perfect. That's right. Yes. Who who who's it talking about when you say be ye perfect for I am perfect? Who's perfect? Yeah, we are. Oh, who's perfect? Ain't, ain't our father perfect? Yes, he is. And he's telling us, us to be perfect like him? That's right. Now, the only way for us to be perfect like him is what I'm telling you is this process. First of all, your identity find out who you are. Once you find out who you are, you end up being be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then the last step is you actually doing it, the lifestyle and stuff. And when you do the lifestyle, it's going to be a natural thing, like walking, like talking. You know what I'm saying? Like walking, talking, hearing, and stuff like that. It's not going to be the, uh, you know, it's not going to be hard, as the Bible say, burdensome to do. It's going to be easy. It's going to flow naturally. You know what I'm saying? Then when you do the things, then I guarantee you, my brothers and sisters, you will understand the salvation truth like how I understand it now. The total salvation truth is this, is that you have to know who you are. You have to know who the most high God is. And you have to activate into your life. That's the salvation truth, my brothers and sisters. So I'm going um, to leave you with one more thing. And so to deny it, I'm, I'm telling y'all, I'm not a long with preacher. I don't believe in it. And stuff, because, you know, it's the Sabbath, we trying to chill. <laughs> it's cool to be in church, but we want to chill too, right? So, one more script, and we're, that's it. We're going to want uh, another familiar scripture. It would be Romans chapter 8, verse um, 1 through 11. Very familiar. It says this, Dur um, There is therefore no condemnation. To those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law cannot do, that is what was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin. He could he condemned sin. Uh, in the flesh that the righteousness required of the law might be fulfilled and us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to what? The spirit. Not according to ourselves, not according to our ideology, but according to the spirit. When you truly walk in by faith in the spirit there is no condemnation whatsoever. Even though we have a person that's an advocate. They'll try to find every little excuse to try to find something against us. Whether if our lifestyles or whatever, stuff like that and stuff, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Once we're you in the spirit, it does not matter at all. Because you are in Christ. Yes. 